Hello everybody and welcome back to the 97 English course. In today's recording we're going to be going over Unit 6, Culture and Civilization. So as you guys all know, we always start with the key vocabulary here. So I'll say the words, you know, you could always pause and say after me, and then we'll move to listening. Okay, let's go. Adult, aunt or aunt, boy, boyfriend, brother, cat, CD player, cell phone, child slash children, cousin, credit card, daughter, digital watch, dog, father, female, friend, girl, girlfriend, grandfather, grandmother, husband, laptop computer, male, man slash men, mother, mp3 player, old, parents, Passport, person slash people, relatives, sister, son, teenager, uncle, wife, woman slash woman, young. Okay, now let's go to listening. Right, so here we have you know a couple pictures here we have you know people of different age groups right and you know before we listen to the audio here you guys should acknowledge that these are old people these are kids they're female these are male kids so male is for you know men or kids that are boys okay female okay and here we have young adults okay and I'm not too sure what this pic is right here is doing next to all the females, but we'll see. Let's just let's let's start the listening. So, exercise A ninety five is listen and point. So as usual, I'll play it once the first time, and then I'll solve it or you know whatever is necessary. I'll do it in the second time. Let's go. Ninety five. Unit six. Culture and civilization. Lesson 1. Listening. Exercise A. Listen and point. A man. A woman. A boy. A girl. A child. An adult. A female person. A male person. An old person. A young person. Boys. Girls, men, women, children, adults, females, males, friends. Okay. Now, I'm going to play it again, you guys, but this time I want you to actually pause the video with every word and try to identify what the word means from the pictures here. Okay, so let's just, you know, a brief example, you know, if I say an old person, you guys should know that this is an old person, okay? And I'll talk about the words after we finish the second time recording here. Let's go. 95. Unit 6. Culture and Civilization. Lesson 1. Listening. Exercise A. Listen and and point a man a woman a boy a girl a child an adult a female person a male person an old person a young person boys girls men women children Adults, 
females, males, friends. Okay, now I'm not gonna play it again, but I'm actually, I have the words, I wrote down the words here of voice one and voice two, so the people that were speaking uh, in that audio, and we'll try and identify what the words mean, okay? So first off, we have a man, and this is, you know, normal, a man, this is a man, this is a man, these are men, okay? So the plural of the word man is not mans, you guys, okay? It's men. I changed the A and put E, okay? So a man, this is a man, these are men, okay? Second, we have a woman, okay? This is a woman, this is a woman, this is a woman, and this is also a woman. You know, and plural for, for woman is not woman's, it's women, okay? I change, you know, that A in the end, and I put E, okay? So, woman and plural women, okay? Then we have a boy. This is a boy, you know, a male kid, a boy, a girl. This is a girl right here. All these are girls, okay? A child. You know, a child is ba a small kid, so a child. These are children, okay? So the plural of child is children, okay? Then we have an adult, and an, an adult is basically someone from the age of twen 20 to, let's say, around 65. This is usually considered, you know, an adult. And right after 65 is when we consider someone to be old, okay? So a female person, obviously you guys know a female person is, a, you know, it can be a woman or it can be a girl, so all these are female people. A male person, same thing here, a male, the, these are males and, you know, one person, so this can be a male person and this can be a male person. An old person, you know, someone that's old, and as you can see, these fellow gentlemen here are old, so an old person is one of them. Then we have a young person, and you can see this kid right here, he's young, he still has his full life ahead of him, so this is a young person. And this, she's also young, so this can be a young person, right? Now we have the other dude that was talking, voice two, and now he's going to say the same words, but in plural, okay? So boys, these are boys, the capital, or not the capital, sorry, the plural of boys, or the plural of boy is boys, okay? Then we have girls, the plural of a girl is girls, then we have men, okay? These are men, I told you guys. Women, okay, women. Children, okay, the plural of a child is children. So I write the word child and then R-E-N. So children, then we have adults. These are all adults, okay. People, you know, from the age of 20 to, you know, around 60, 65. And some people just prefer to call everybody adults, no matter how old. Okay, females, these are females right here as well, males, these are all males, and finally, friends, you know, these are friends, these two, you know, they're all friends, these are friends as well, okay, so now let's move on to exercise B here, listen and find, okay, now let's play the audio, 96. Exercise B. Listen and find. Circle one person. Circle one boy. Circle the girls. Circle the boys. Circle the women. Circle the men. Circle the adults. Circle the children. Circle the people. Circle the male people. Circle the female people. Okay, let's play that one more time, but this time I'm going to be solving it as we go uh, through the audio. 96. Exercise B. Listen and find. Circle one person. So circle one person, you can circle anybody in these pictures, so because a person can be literally anyone, you guys. So. Well, I'll just circle 
you know, this old dude right here, okay? So you can circle or just, you know, write an arrow or something. Circle one boy. One boy. We know, you know, we know these guys are not boys. They're old men. So this is a boy. This is a boy. So circle one of them, okay? Circle the girls. Okay. So he, she said, circle the girls. Girls as in plural, okay? So I'm not going to circle one. So I could circle all of them or I could circle, you know, two of them or more, okay? But I cannot circle just one girl, all right, you guys? But, well, you know, you can just circle all of them as in girls, okay? Circle the boys. Circle the boys, all right? So here we have the three boys as in plural, so we are going to circle them. Circle the women. Circle the women. Here we have the four women. I'm still not too sure, honestly, how this picture is related to these women, but <laughs> whatever. So here we have these four women, and we'll circle them, okay? Circle the men. Circle the men. These are the men, ca cap uh, not capital, plural, of man, you guys. So men, circle these three fellow gentlemen right here. Circle the adults. Circle the adults. Okay, so I told you guys, you know, an adult is basically someone right after the age of 19, so 20, 20 to 65, 70-ish. So she looks like an adult. She looks like an adult. All, all of these are adults. These are also adults, okay? These are not because they're not over the age of 19, and they just look like kids. So these two pictures, we'll, we'll circle both of them, okay? So these are the adults. Circle the children. Now the exact opposite. Now instead of wanting the adults, he wants the children. So we'll circle these two pictures because these are kids and these are kids and they're all children. Circle the people. Okay, so we'll just circle everything right here and just name it people because people is er literally everybody in these pictures, okay? So when I talk about people, I'm talking about everybody, okay? Everybody that's human is considered a person or people, okay? So, these are people, these are people, these are people, and these are people. Circle the male people. Okay, circle the male people. Okay, so now she got a little bit more specific. So, male people. So, we'll circle, you know, these men right here. And I'm not too sure if we should circle this guy. But you know what? Fine. So, circle this guy. Circle these people. Or not, the, yeah, these people, as in male people, and these kids, okay, as in male people as well. Circle the female people. And finally, the exact opposite. We'll circle all the female people here. So all the females will be circled in these two pictures right here. All right? Now let's move on to exercise C. Listen and answer. 97. Exercise C. Listen and answer. How many boys are there in the pictures? How many girls are there in the pictures? How many adults are there? How many children are there? How many people are there? How many male people are there? How many female people are there? All right, let's play that one more time and I'll solve it as we go. 19. Exercise C. Listen and answer. How many boys are there in the pictures? Okay, let's look at the pictures, and we only have one picture that had that has boys, and we have three boys, okay? So, well, you can just write three beside it. How many girls are there in the pictures? All right, how many girls? Notice he said girls and not women. Okay, or ladies, so girls as in young girls. So one, two, three, and four, so four here. How many adults are there? All right, here we have adults. So you guys know what adult means by now. So here we have, this is an adult. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and finally this young dude right here. So eight, all right? So we have eight adults. How many children are there? How many, ch how many people are there? 
Okay, that was fast. <laughs> we'll do the how many children are there first. So here we have four girls and three boys. So that is a total of seven. So okay, so so uh, seven children. Okay, and sh what was the the next one? How many people are there? Hmm, how many people are there? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, so number of people is 15. Okay, let me show sure I got that correctly. How many people are there? How many male people? Okay, so yeah, 15. Okay, we can just write people 15. And uh, I think I heard that right. How many male people are there? Okay, so how many male people? Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so we have seven male people in the th four pictures. How many female people are there? All right, now the exact opposite. How many female people? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight female people. And that's it. All right, now let's move on to exercise D here. And here we have listen, true or false. Okay, so he's going to give us, you know, a statement or a sentence, and we have to check if it's f true or false. Okay? 98. Exercise D. Listen. True or false? 1. There are eight adults. There are five women and three men. 2. There are 14 people. There are 9 male people and 5 female people. 3. There are 6 children, 4 girls and 2 boys. 4. There aren't any female children. Okay, so now, actually, I'm going to play it again, you guys, and then, you know, I'll solve it right after. 90 exercise D. Listen. True or false? 1. There are 8 adults. There are 5 women and 3 men. 2. There are 14 people. There are 9 male people and 5 female people. 3. There are 6 children, 4 girls and 2 boys. 4. There aren't any female children. Alright. Now let me... Uh, actually read the statements again and then we'll make sure if everything is right or true or false okay so number one was there are eight adults there are five women and three men okay so let's check the adults here so one two three four five six seven eight okay so we have eight adults okay so that's correct there are five women okay I'm not too sure how they noticed that this was a man or a woman sorry so one, two, three, four. Here we have four women, not five. Okay. So this on its own makes the statement false, by the way. Okay. And three men. So one, two, three. Okay. So everything is true except for that part where uh, he said five women. Okay. So first statement will be false. Okay. Now let's move on to number two. There are 14 people. There are nine male people and five female people. Okay. So total is, um, there are 14 people, okay? So let's actually count count it one more time. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and finally 15. Okay, so there are 15 people, not 14, so this makes the statement, you know, false. But let's just keep going. There are nine nine male people, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seven we only have seven male people so this is also false okay and we have five female people one two three four five six seven eight uh, this is obviously just false to the bone you guys so let's move on to number three there are six children four girls and two boys okay so there are six children one two three four five six seven obviously wrong again we here we have four and we have eight okay so we have eight children total okay 
four girls, this one's, yeah, true, and two boys, wrong. So that makes the statement also false, okay? Now let's go to number four. There aren't any female children. This is just obviously wrong to the bone again. We have four female children here, okay? Now let's move on here. Here we have, you know, uh, a few words here related obviously to people as well. So here we have a baby, child, teenager, young adult, and old person. And I wanted to tell you guys, you know, a baby is usually someone from, you know, ever since, you know, from zero years old basically to 18 months or two years, okay? So the first two years of your life, you're a baby, okay? No questions asked about that. And then after two years, you're considered a child, okay? So a child is someone from around, hmm, maybe, you know, three years old to around 12, Okay, so this is an age of being a child. And then after that, you have teenager. And you guys remember this word when you, we talked about that unit that had the numbers. I told you guys, you know, the numbers that had the teen word in the end, you know, it's the same thing with teenagers. And this is where the word is from, actually. So you guys remember 13 to 19 are teenagers, okay? So a lot of people confuse this with, you know, in some places, you know, the legal age is 18. So people consider themselves adults when they're 18 or after 18. And that is true according to the law. But, you know, according to just, you know, your age as a human being, you're a teenager from 13 years old to 19 years old. Okay? You're considered a teenager. And right after that, you're considered a young adult or basically an adult. Okay? People just use the word young to... I'm not too sure, honestly. So someone from 20 to 25 years old is usually considered a young adult. Anything after that, and he's just simply an adult. Okay? And finally, we have an old person. You know, an old person is someone, you know, 60, you know, 65 years old and above is considered someone that's, yeah, pretty, yeah, he's like really old. Okay? So now let's go to exercise E here. Look at the photographs above and listen. Okay? So listen and number, you guys know the drill, and listen and answer. So let's listen right now. 99. Exercise E1. Listen and number. 1. How old are you? 15. Ah, so you're a teenager now. Yes, that's right. 2. Do you have any children? Yes, I have one child. He's ten. Three. It's strange, you know. I'm eighty, but I don't feel like an old person. Four. She is a nurse. She works in a hospital. She's about thirty. Five. What a lovely baby. How old is she? She's ten months. Right, now let's listen to that again, but this time I'll be, you know, pausing it and answering the exercise here. Or, should I say numbering the words? 99. Exercise E1. Listen and number. 1. How old are you? 15. Ah, oh, so you're a teenager now. Yes, that's right. Okay, so the first word is teenager. 8. 2. Do you have any children? Yes, I have one child. I have one child, so the word child will be number 2. He's 10. 3. It's strange, you know. I'm 80, but I don't feel like an old person. Old person will be number 3, you guys. 4. She is a nurse. She works in a hospital. She's about 30. Okay, so he didn't exactly say young adult, right? But, you know, the signs or the information given, you know, they're really obvious. So she's a nurse, okay? And she's about 30 years old, so she's considered a young adult, okay? So number four will be young adult. Five. What a lovely baby. How old is she? She's 10 months. All right, final word will be baby, okay? 
Now let's move on to two a hundred. Listen and answer. I'm gonna play it once. One hundred. Exercise E two. Listen and answer. How old is the baby? How old is the boy? What about the teenager? Is the woman about fifty? Is the old person about sixty? Okay, so in order to answer these questions here, you guys, you're gonna have to listen to this, to this one again right here, but this time just focus on the information. Okay, don't focus about numbering anything right now. Just focus about the information given. All right, so listen carefully. Ninety-nine, one. Listen and number. One. How old are you? Fifteen. Ah, so you're a teenager now. Yes, that's right. Two. Do you have any children? Yes, I have one child. He's ten. Three. It's strange, you know. I'm eighty. But I don't feel like an old person. Four. She is a nurse. She works in a hospital. She's about thirty. Five. What a lovely baby! How old is she? She's ten months. All right. Now let me play this for you guys again, and try to pause it and answer it yourself. Okay. One hundred. Exercise E two. Listen and answer. How old is the baby? How old is the boy? What about the teenager? Is the woman about fifty? Is the old person about sixty? Okay. Now I'm gonna play One. it again. Oh, my bad. So I'm gonna play it again. And this time I'll be pausing it, or yeah, I'll be pausing it, or not, depending on the seconds that I can use to answer. Okay, so let's go. Hundred. Exercise E two. Listen and answer. How old is the baby? The baby is ten months. How old is the boy? The boy is ten years old. What about the teenager? She's fifteen. Is the woman about fifty? No, the woman is thirty years old. Is the old person about sixty? No, he's not. He's eighty years old. Okay, you guys, this was simple enough. Now, let's move on. Here we have listen and write. Write the ages in, from, and to, and then one o one. Listen and check. Okay. So, like I told you guys, like <laughs> like I told you guys, here we have baby, child. Teenager, adult, and finally old person, and he wants the age from two. Okay, so we have to put two numbers down here, from you know a specific number to another specific number, and then we're gonna have to listen and check. But actually, let's listen first, so we get get the information, and then we'll write it down. One hundred and one. Exercise F two. Listen and check. Okay, today we're looking at words for different kinds of people. In British culture, we use the word "baby" for the first eighteen months or maybe two years of life. Then the baby becomes a child. We use the word "child" for boys and girls between the ages of two and twelve. Then we have a special word, teenager. The word comes from the numbers between thirteen and nineteen. They all end in teen, so a person who is thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and so on is a teenager. Finally, we have the word adult. We use the word for people from twenty up to about a hundred, but sometimes we say he is old or she is an old person for someone over sixty-five or seventy. And of course, we can say young adult for people of around twenty to twenty-five. Is it the same in your culture? When does a baby become a child? When does a teenager become an adult? When is a person old? All right, these were some pretty valuable information. Okay, 
So now let's go, here we have, so baby. So from, uh, let's just say zero right here, right? And she said around, you know, 18 months or two years. So let's just write two here as in two years, okay? And then we have child, okay? A child is usually from two years old to around 12, okay? And then we have teenager, you guys know this one, 13 to 19, okay? And adult is someone from around 20 to, I think she said, you know, 100. You know, most people don't live that long, by the way. It's sad, but it's the truth. <laughs> so adult is 20 years old to 100. And an old person is, we could say, for example, 65 or around 70. Okay? And, you know, you know, 2, you know, depending on how old, you know, the person lives right so baby zero to two years old child two years old to 12 years old adult 13 years old to 19 years old or teenager sorry 13 to 19 adult 20 years old to 100 old person 65 or 70 or just simply 70 years old or no matter how long that person lives now let's go down here. Here we have exercise G. Study the words in the box and write each word under the correct underlined vowel sound. Okay? And then he wants us to listen and check. Okay? So here we have, you know, a few words. Let me actually open this up for you guys. Okay? So here we have some words and we have you know, some different sounding vowels. Okay? So for example, here we have a 10. You guys see how that E is pronounced in 10? Uh, you can okay six as I don't say Sykes I say six you guys okay so that I will be eh that eh sound okay then we have three three you guys that see that e okay so three then we have that I sound so five I five then we have that a sound so a eight okay thirty that a, then similar to that A, but kind of different, okay? So now let's listen. You know, I'll actually let you guys listen to this twice, and then I'll solve it. 102. Exercise G2. Listen and check. Baby. Child. Children. Female. Friend. Girl, male, men, person, people, women. All right, let's listen to that one more time. 102. Exercise G2. Listen and check. Baby. Child, children, female, friend, girl, male, men, person, people, women. Okay, now let me try and solve it. I hope you're able to get a few words in. So basically we have the word 10. And usually it kind of rhymes or just makes a similar sound. So what what words here make the same sound as 10 or it has that same pronunciation for E? So we could say men. I'm not Oh, so we can write it down here. So men, right? So 10, men, friend. You guys see that? Friend. Okay, or oops, I did not mean to write it like that. Friend. Okay. So 10, men, and friend. And then we have 6, chilled, children. Okay, so, you know, pronouncing the first half could give you kind of a clue to, you know, whether it's true or not. So 6, chilled, so children, children, okay. And actually, you got to understand the question. So he says the word might not sound similar at all like for example six and children 
don't rhyme at all, but he doesn't want any rhyming words. He wants each word, you know, with the underlined vowel sound. So he only wants the sound of the vowel and not the whole world, uh, the whole word. Sorry. So six chill children or six chill children. Okay. And then women. Okay. Six chilled wim women. Okay. Kind of that sound right there. Okay, six children, women, and then we have three. Fee, female, female. You guys see that? So three, fee, female. Okay, so three, fee, people. Okay, so people. So three, female, people. And there's only, I think there's only one word that fits here with five. So five can be child. Okay, so five, child. All right. And then we have eight. Eight can be male. Eight, may, male. Okay. And eight, babe. So you guys know if I say, if I don't pronounce the the Y at the end of baby, it sounds a lot like eight. So eight, babe, all right? And then we have 30, thir, girl, okay? Really close. This one's really close, actually. So 30, girl. If I put a Y here, it's, it sounds like kind of exactly the same. So 30, girly, okay? Person, person, okay? Here we have person. All right, you guys. So this was the final exercise here. Now let's move on to speaking. All right, you guys. So here we have the speaking section, lesson two of this unit. And what we want to actually like focus on in this unit is to give a talk about your own family and really try to understand, you know, the words of family. Okay. So we talked about it a little bit in the listening. But here, we got to focus more on it and try to memorize it, you know? So when I tell you, you know, a grandfather, what's a grandfather? What does it mean? Or r not rather, what, but who, okay? What is a child? Who is a child, okay? So here we have four pictures, as you can see, different people, different age groups, obviously. And actually, let's, here's a good question. So exercise A, how many of these people are there in each? So we have teenagers babies, boys, women, children, men, girls, and adults, okay? So this is, this will obviously be up to you, you know, how you, you know, form a sentence on, you know, how many adults, how many kids, or how many children are in each picture, but let me just give you some possible answers. Obviously, you can pause it, solve this, and then come back to check, so let's go. So number one, here we have an older man, so sort of like the father figure, okay, or actually a father. <laughs> and here we have the mother. And it seems that we have two teenagers here. One is male and one is female. So I could say two teenagers, two adults, one girl, one boy, one man, and one woman, okay? So I can say two adults, and I can also say one man, one woman, and I can also say both, okay? Now let's go to number two here. So it seems that we have a woman here, okay? So one woman, and she's also an adult, so I can say one adult. And here we have four children, all right? So one woman, one adult, four children, two girls, okay? One boy, and one baby, okay? So she's, yeah, yeah, this baby right here is considered, you know, a child slash baby, right? So one woman, one adult, four children, two girls, one boy, and finally one baby. Now let's go to number three here. Here we have, as you can see, two women, right? I can also say two men. You know, we see two men over here. Four adults, you know, so the total number of adults in the picture, so one, two, three four, so four adults, two children, one boy, and one girl, okay? So let's go now to number four. 
okay and look at the photograph so here hmm, there are okay so let's actually check here so we have how many adults do we have here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven okay eleven and um, is she an adult I'm not too sure so uh, you know we can just yeah we can just uh, yeah she's an adult you know so 13 adults total okay how many men so one two three four five so five men okay and how many women one two three four five six seven so seven women okay one two three four five six six children okay and that's about it yeah that's these are good information right so now let's go to exercise B look at the family words in the first column of table one okay take the correct column okay so here we have you know a column here so we have these words right and he wants to know you know what does it represent as in you know male or female or both so can the word be used only for male or for female or can you just say it for all people you know as in your relatives and such so let's go, I'll actually just uh, read them first and then we'll take them together actually let's see if I can take them with you guys here okay okay that's good so I, I can so let me start so we have aunt or aunt whatever you prefer brother cousin daughter father grandfather grandmother husband mother parents relatives sister son uncle wife okay now let's solve it together so number one is obviously aunt and when I'm talking about an aunt obviously female you guys okay male would be uncle okay so uncle male aunt is female okay brother is obviously male cousin can be used for both so if I'm referring to my cousin I gotta specify more is she female is she male you know and here we have father obviously male okay grandfather uh, male as well okay grandmother female easy husband is male right mother is female parents so when I'm talking about parents I can use both because I didn't specify okay relatives relatives can be both as well you know when I'm talking about relatives in general I'm not specifying to a group of people so for example males or females I'm talking about both sister sister will be female son son is obviously male and here we go uncle you guys remember this so uncle will be male and finally wife wife will be female okay now here we have pairs of family words that I want you guys to listen to and I actually I'm gonna play it twice right but I'm not gonna interfere at all and I'll just move on right after that so you can pause you know however many times you want and just try to listen to the pair so for example husband and wife you know sister and brother okay so let's go 104 lesson 2 speaking exercise B2 listen to pairs of family words repeat each pair mother and father brother and sister son and daughter uncle and aunt mother and daughter father and son parents and children grandparents and grandchildren husband and wife boyfriend and girlfriend children and babies parents and relatives all right that was pretty self-explanatory now let me play it one more time and then we'll move on 104 lesson 2 speaking exercise B2 listen to pairs of family words repeat each pair mother and father 
brother and sister, son and daughter, uncle and aunt, mother and daughter, father and son, parents and children, grandparents and grandchildren, husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, children and babies, parents and relatives. All right. That was easy enough. Now let's move on. So here we have find an example of each pair in the photos above. Okay, so we have you know some of the pairs. We don't need, we don't need to do too much here. So here, for example, we could say husband and wife. You know, mother and father, or these two could be <laughs> parents as well. So mother and father, husband and wife. Okay, or girlfriend and boyfriend. I'm not too sure. Okay. Here we also have, you know, brother and sister, and so on. You guys get the idea. So now, actually, let's move to the rest of exercise B. Here we have draw your family tree. This one's actually going to be entirely up to you, you know, however you like to write it, okay? So here we have my grandmother equals my dash, right? And then with these two, you get dash, 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 and then your father. And from your father... You get this, you, and, you know, any other siblings, or this would be just you, okay? So you can draw your own family tree, but let's just try and complete this first, okay? And this will entirely be up to you, so there's not one definitive answer, okay? So we have my grandmother. I could probably say the only logical word that comes next is my grandfather, okay? And these are pairs as well, you guys. So my grandmother, my grandfather, pairs of words my probably my aunt okay so my aunt my uncle and my mother equals my father okay so here will be my aunt a u n t my uncle and my mother and that equals my father and from my father i could get you know if i have a sister i'd say my sister me and my brother but, you know, if I don't have a brother, you can scratch this, right? So this will be entirely up to you. If you're an only child, you can just leave this blank and cut this one out, okay? So now let's listen to exercise C. Which person is speaking? Okay, so I'm guessing this is just going to be, you know, some people talking, right? And we're going to have to guess, you know, who who's exactly speaking. Like, is it a father, you know, a son, a child, okay? So let's listen to it here. 105. Exercise C. Listen. Which person is speaking? In this photo you can see my son and daughter. They are looking at holiday photos on our laptop. My husband is typing. In this photo I am with my family. You can see my brother, my two younger sisters and also my baby sister. Her name is Jane. My father is taking the photograph. In this photo, you can see all the people in my house. My mother is on the right and my father is on the left. My wife is in the middle. You can see our two children, Sarah and Ben. In this photo, you can see all my relatives. We have a big family. It's a birthday party. My grandmother is 80. All my aunts and uncles and cousins are in the photo. My mother is in the middle in the blue dress. My father is standing behind her. I'm sitting on the right. My baby is with me. All right, so now let's listen to it again, but this time with pauses. 105. Exercise C. Listen. Which person is speaking? In this photo, you can see my son and daughter. They are looking at holiday photos on our laptop. My husband is typing. Okay, so she said she has a son and daughter, and they're looking at holiday photos. And she also said in the end, my husband is typing. So she is obviously a wife slash mother. Okay, now let's move on. In this photo, I am with my family. You can see my brother, my two younger sisters, and also my baby sister, her name is Jane. My father is taking the photograph. Okay, so she said you can see her brother, her two younger sisters, and also her baby sister. 
So obviously she's a sister as well, okay? In this photo, you can see all the people in my house. My mother is on the right and my father is on the left. My wife is in the middle. You can see our two children, Sarah and Ben. Okay, so this dude has quite the life going on. Okay, so all the people are in his house. His mother is on the right, his father is on the left. His wife, he said, was in the middle, I think. And his two children, Sarah and Ben, were also there. So he's obviously a father slash husband, okay? In this photo, you can see all my relatives. We have a big family. It's a birthday party. My grandmother is 80. All my aunts and uncles and cousins are in the photo. My mother is in the middle in the blue dress. My father is standing behind her. I'm sitting on the right. My baby is with me. Okay, so from that information, we know that she's a mother. You know, her grandmother is 80. All her aunts or uncles, and, or you could say relatives, are in the photo. Her mother's in the middle and her father is standing behind her so she's sitting on the right and that piece of information at the end you guys gotta always pay attention she, she said in the end my baby is with me that was the deal breaker you guys so my baby is with me just she's a mother okay now let us move on here we have look at the conversation listen to the conversation and then listen and speak okay so I can already tell from the pictures here actually let me open this up and there are two people talking, I'm guessing about location and where does he live, so let's listen to it. 106. Exercise D1. Listen to the conversation. Where do you live? In an apartment in the city centre. Is it near the university? No, it isn't. The bus takes 40 minutes. Who do you live with? My parents, my brothers and my sisters. Is it a big apartment? No, it isn't. Sometimes it's very difficult. Do you have a part-time job? Yes, I do. I work in a computer shop. Okay, now let's listen to it again, but this time just pay attention to the details, okay? Because in the next, we're going to have to listen and speak, you guys, okay? And I'm actually, I want you to pause the video and speak in the next one. So please just listen to this again and try to gather as much information as possible. One hundred. Exercise D1. Listen to the conversation. Where do you live? In an apartment in the city centre. Is it near the university? No, it isn't. The bus takes 40 minutes. Who do you live with? My parents, my brothers and my sisters. Is it a big apartment? No, it isn't. Sometimes it's very difficult. Do you have a part-time job? Yes, I do. I work in a computer shop. Alright, I hope you were able to gather some pretty valuable information. Now listen and speak, and I'm actually going to play this once, okay, so only once, you guys, and we're going to have pauses, and you can pause the video, you guys, it's okay, you don't need to be limited to a two second window, you know, and you don't necessarily have to say the same information if you feel like you want to, you know, say your own answer in a different setting, for example, or environment, please go ahead. I'm not stopping you, okay? Just speak your mind or from the information above. 107. Exercise D2. Listen and speak. Where do you live? In an apartment in the city centre. Is it near the university? No, it isn't. The bus takes 40 minutes. Who do you live with? My parents, my brothers and my sisters. Is it a big apartment? No, it isn't. Sometimes it's very difficult. Do you have a part-time job? Yes, I do. I work in a computer shop. All right. Now, you can always practice the conversation in pairs, you know, and, and I, I actually encourage this. So if you have like a classmate or a partner, you know, in your free time, you can always just 
ask you know the same questions you know but with a different style however you like and try to give you know as much true information as possible okay so try not to lie too much even if your life is not that interesting all right I'm just kidding by the way about that last part so now let's go to exercise E here we have choose verbs and phrases to make sentences okay so we have some verbs here live work study have and with these verbs you know we should make you know with the phrases here we have in a bank a brother a cat in a house in an apartment alone with my parents psychology in the city center in a village two sisters at university okay so the options here are unlimited you guys so you can use each and every verb here to make a lot of sentences so for example let's start with the word live okay so for example obviously I can say I live in a house okay my sister lives in an apartment I could say my dad lives alone okay but you know I'd have to add an s here alright so my sister lives in an apartment I live in a house and for example I could also say you know for the word live as well I live in the city center okay my brother lives with my with my parents for example okay you know the options are limitless and here we have work so I could say same style as well I work in a bank all right I work in the city center again that works too I work I uh, think that's about it <laughs> so not too much there and so let's actually go to study there we have study this is actually gonna be limitless so I could say my brother studies psychology but guys remember I'd have to get rid of the Y here and add I yes or I could simply say I study psychology okay I study alone just because why not I study in an apartment I know it, it's probably weird but it works hey if it works <laughs> it works I study at university alright have so this is actually interesting I could say I have a cat I have a brother my now but if I say my sister then that would change have into has okay but if I add plural so instead of my sister I could say you know if I say my siblings my siblings as in you know my brothers and sisters so my siblings have a cat you see how that works out okay um, uh, I have I could say not too much actually should we have a cat and brother and nothing else so have goes with a cat and brother okay now let's go to oh exercise F 108 listen to his students talk about his family okay so we have a student a student here that's gonna talk about his family and we're gonna have to write notes so I'm actually gonna play this twice and then I'll write the notes down with you guys 108 exercise F Listen to a student's talk about his family. OK, uh, this talk is about my home and family and my work. We're a small family. There are two adults, my mother and father, and there are two teenagers, my brother and me. I don't have a sister. I live with my parents in a small house. It's about um, two kilometres from the city. There's a small garden and we have a cat. I study English and tourism at university. I have a part-time job at the weekend. I work in my father's restaurant. That's all. Alright, so you guys are gonna need to master the art of making notes because it'll actually help tremendously later when you actually start your courses in university and such. So you gotta have that art of, you know, being able to listen to a lecture and just being able to make notes that will help you later on or for example if you're preparing for a speech or something and I'll actually talk more once I finish this exercise here so now listen again but this time try to focus on the information as much as possible okay and write it down so whenever you think there's something on your on your mind that for example related to adults write it down okay don't hesitate teenagers sister 
sister's parents' city. Okay, you guys get the idea. So let's go. One. Exercise F. Listen to a student's talk about his family. Okay. Uh, this talk is about my home and family, and my work. We're a small family. There are two adults, my mother and father, and there are two teenagers, my brother and me. I don't have a sister. I live with my parents in a small house. It's about um two kilometers from the city. There's a small garden, and we have a cat. I study English and tourism at university. I have a part-time job at the weekend. I work in my father's restaurant. That's all. All right. I hope you were able to get some notes down, and I actually wrote them myself as well. So let's hop right into the answer. So we have adults. He said there were two adults, so we'll just write two. Okay. Father, just for extra information, father and mother. Okay. Oops, mother. And teenagers, he said two as well. So two, brother, and himself. Or I could say me, or himself. So I'll just write himself. Oh, I did not mean to add that E. Okay. And sisters, none. So I'll just, I could just write none. Parents. So in parents, I think he said something along the lines of, he lives with them, so I could just say lives with, right? And he also mentioned that they have a small house, so I could write that. So small house. Then we have city. So the city, actually remember this, he actually said that the city is two kilometers from his house. So I could say two kilometers. Let me actually do this. Kilometers from house. Okay, And the thing about notes, you guys, is that you don't really need to be, you know, you, you need, <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't need to use, like, the correct grammar. It, like, you can skip some words if it means being faster to get more notes in, you know what I mean? Because when a teacher is, for example, giving a lecture, right, you don't, there's no time for you to write sentences upon, upon sentences of the same subject right you gotta just write something really quick that really quick that gives you that memorization that you need and then move on right so inst i could say you know the the city is two kilometers from his house okay but just i could just write two kilometers from house and move on okay that that speed is needed and it's acquired by practice okay so always practice making notes in your free time okay so here we have garden and I think he said something along the lines of uh, they had a small garden. So instead of saying a small garden, I could just write small, okay? If it's too advanced right now, I could say small garden, okay? But whatever, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. Cat, he said they have a cat. So probably give this a, just a simple yes. Oh, yes, okay? University. And he said he studies English and tourism. So I could say study, okay, English and, oh, <laughs> and tourism, okay? Study English and tourism. And finally, job. He said he had, uh, or he has a part-time job. Part-time. I don't need really need to write job, so part-time. And he works at his father's restaurant, if I remember correctly. So, restaurant, okay. And that's it. Okay, so adults too, father, mother, teenagers too, brother himself, sisters, none, parents, lives with, small house, city, two kilometers from house, garden, small garden, cat, yes, he has a cat, university, study English and tourism, and finally job, part-time and restaurant, okay. So now... Now he wants you to give a talk about your family on exercise G. Make no make notes and prepare your talk and give the talk in pairs or groups. Let me give you a piece of advice when making notes to prepare for, you know, a talk or just, just if you're gonna speak to someone, whether to a group of people publicly, or just you or if it's simply an assignment, you know? And it's actually it's actually written here as well. So we have 
make notes for your talk, practice, practice saying any new or difficult words, and practice the sentences for your talk. And remember, please remember this, this is very important, don't read full sentences aloud and look up from your notes. Okay, so what, is he, what he means by this is, like, you don't just take that piece of paper that you have your notes in and just start reading it in front of people. That is both disrespectful and bad on your part, okay? What you do is you use your notes to give you just kind of a reminder, you know what I mean? So associate a certain, you know, um, thing, a certain idea or information from your notes, and you can just look, look, give it a quick look or a second look or two second look, regain your thoughts, and start speaking. This is what your notes are helpful for. Besides, you know, writing things down makes you memorize it a lot easier. So this is how notes benefit you guys, okay? And always, 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 before giving a talk, don't leave yourself to the last minute. Always practice, even if it means, you know, for example, record yourself. We have technology that, hell, I'm recording right now, okay? So record yourself, look in a mirror, okay? And try to imitate the environment that you're going to be in, right? So you don't feel embarrassed or, or such. Just try your best to get more and more comfortable, whether it means pronouncing difficult words or new words that you simply didn't know yet. So everybody has new words, okay? So always practice, okay? You can fail a lot of times, but try and get better and better each time, okay? Take a break whenever you need to and practice the sentences for your talk, all right? And please, please, please don't read full sentences aloud. That is not allowed. Just take a quick idea, uh, take, a, take a quick glance at your notes and start talking, right? And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, you guys. So now let's move on to lesson three, vocabulary and pronunciation. And here we have some pictures, right? And he wants us to match these words here with these pictures. So before we do that, please pause the video and take a look at each picture and try and guess, you know, the best word that fits with the picture, okay? So actually, let me just open this real quick. Here we have the pictures again and we have the words here. So we have pet, digital watch, laptop computer, passport, credit card, cell phone, mp3 player, CD player, okay? So first first word, pet. What does a pet mean? A pet is an animal that you take home and treat it as your own. You know, <laughs> I just pulled that out of my mind. I swear to God, I did not prepare for this, okay? So pet will be right here okay so you can you see a lot of people have pet cats and pet dogs and pet rabbits and such okay that's what it means and then we have digital watch a digital watch is unlike an ordinary watch has numbers on it okay so an ordinary watch has you kind of you guys know the arrows or hands that move these digital watches don't have that they just have a screen and hence the name digital Okay, so let's put this here, and we have laptop computer, obviously you guys know what laptop computer is, here we go, passport, everybody has a passport, it's what allows you to travel, and basically your identity, so let me take this here, and boom, okay, and then we have a cell phone, okay, cell phone is the new generation of phones that use 4G and internet and all the other stuff, okay, we have CD player. Nobody uses those, by the way. These are long gone, so <laughs> CD player right here. And we have MP3 player, this right here. And finally, we have credit card. Credit card is a card that you use to, you know, like kind of take a loan out, you know, but not a big loan, but kind of like just a quick loan that you'll pay off like in a month or something like that, right? So now let's move on. Here we have exercise B. A student is asking questions. Listen and complete his conversation with a teenager. All right, so let's listen to it the first time and then we'll see what we'll do. 109. Lesson three, vocabulary and pronunciation. Exercise B. A student is asking questions. Listen and complete his conversation with a teenager.
I am doing a survey on possessions. OK. Can I ask you some questions? Yes, sure. Do you have a credit card? No, I don't. Do you have a digital watch? Pardon? What kind of watch? A digital watch. What's a digital watch? It has numbers, like 235. It doesn't have hands. Oh, right. Yes, I do. All right. That was an interesting conversation. Now let's play it again, but this time I'll be solving it with you guys. 109. Lesson 3. Vocabulary and Pronunciation. Exercise B. A student is asking questions. Listen and complete his conversation with a teenager. I am doing a survey on possessions. OK. Can I ask you some questions? Yes, sure. Do you have a credit card? No, I don't. Do you have a digital watch? Pardon? What kind of watch? A digital watch. What's a digital watch? It has numbers, like 235. It doesn't have hands. Oh, right. Yes, I do. All right. Now, let's actually read this one more time. So, I'm doing a survey on possessions. She says, OK, can I ask you some questions? Yes, sure. Do you have a credit card? No, I don't. Do you have a digital watch? OK, pardon. And the word pardon here, it's sort of s similar to excuse me, right? So when you, know, when, you know when you don't understand someone, for example, and you want to grab their attention, so you say excuse me or you say sorry, or you can say pardon me, OK, or pardon, OK? So what kind of watch? A digital, wa a digital watch. What's a digital watch? It has numbers. For example, 235. It doesn't have hands. And she says, oh, right. Yes, I do. All right. Now, let's move on here. OK, so exercise C. Have conversations about the possessions in the photographs above. Give true information. So this is actually, this exercise right here is best done with uh, classmates or friends. So, you know, take a look at the pictures above here. Here we have a laptop, computer, passport, credit cards, etc. And he wants you to just give true information about yourself. Like, for example, let a, a classmate ask you questions and give true information. So, for example, I could say, um, do you have a laptop? And someone would answer, yeah, yes, I do. Okay. Do you have a digital watch? No, I don't. Do you have a pet? No, I don't. Do you have a credit card? Yes, I do. And you guys get the idea. Now, let's move on to exercise D here. And here we have complete the sentences with true information about yourself. Okay? So this is just going to be entirely up to you, honestly. So there's no definitive answer. Just do whatever you feel. You know, <laughs> what's true about yourself. So for example, I dash in a large house. So for me, personally, I'd say I do don't all right, I'll just write don't live in a large house right I have a credit card or I do not have a credit card so I could say I don't have a credit card okay um, computing I could say I like computing or I could say I study computing okay I have a laptop computer okay same thing with passport I have a passport and I could say I study at university or if you don't that would be weird but <laughs> I don't study at university right now let's move on here we have the pie charts and I'm personally a big fan of pie charts they make you know reading statistics so much easier you'll understand why in a second so copy each word or phrase below in the correct space so here we have a full ball, an orange circle. And then some of that circle turns kind of sky blue, right? And then it grows more, more, more. So let's say, for example, this is just an example, by the way. This is not related to the exercise. So let's say this was, uh, for example, sugar, right? The blue sky is sugar. And the orange or dark brown, I'm not honestly like orange, let's just say orange, is honey, okay? So now I can kind of guess the ratio between the two. So here in this in this uh, pie chart right here, or not pie chart, yeah, in pie chart, I could say 
you know, sugar is a lot more than honey. I could hit here I could say, you know, honey's catching up, but sugar is still a lot more, right? And here, honey's starting to take over. And here is honey, no sugar at all. And here is little sugar, okay? So based on what we just did, we know that this is all. He gave us number one, okay? So this means that this is full, all. And the statistics, by the way, you're the one that puts the information. So this is just a normal pie chart. People use, this can be money, this can be uh, gold. Just depends on what, you, what you're using the pie chart for. So number one is all, okay? Number two is probably, I'd say, most, okay? Because most, it's so close, but it's still not quite all, so most. Then number three will be many, okay? Because it's quite a lot, but it's not most, right? So it's kind of many, all right? And then we have four. Four will probably be some, so some as in, you know, yeah, yeah, cool. Not too much, not too little, you know, some. And then we have five is few or a few, okay? A few is as in, you know, there is not too much, just a little bit, right? I hope that was easy. You guys need to study the pie charts more. They're really helpful. So read the text about teenage life in Britain. Write a suitable noun in each space. Okay, so let's actually open this and read it together. And we'll just write the nouns down as we go. So we have all teenagers in Britain dash uh, or stay at dash to the age of 16. So to the age of 16, I'm guessing the lowest is probably school. Okay, so all teenagers in Britain stay at school to the age of 16. Many teenagers stay another two dash um, I'm guessing two years because most people finish when they're 18 so many teenagers stay another two years. Some teenagers go to university or dash after school. Make college only suitable answer honestly after school. Many teenagers have a part-time, this one's obvious, job, you guys, okay? Have a, uh, a part-time job, okay? Most teenagers in Britain live with their, um, I'm guessing, parents. So, parents, okay? Most, most teenagers live in uh, homes, houses. Okay. Oh, all right. Look, look, look. You guys remember in the last unit when we talked about, you know, if you don't understand a certain word or you're confused, always look front or back. So here I have, I read most teenagers live in dash, but then when you go forward, some houses. So now I, I know that he's talking about houses. Okay. So I'll write here houses. Okay. Most teenagers live in houses. Some houses have a small garden. And a few teenagers live alone. But actually, I read that wrong. Some houses have a small garden, and then that's a full stop. So a few teenagers uh, live alone. You can leave, I'm guessing, home. Home. You can leave home in Britain at 16. Many teenagers have a... All right, again, same thing. You don't know what he's talking about? Go forward. Cats and... I'm guessing dogs, they forgot to write it down, so cats and dogs are very popular. So yes, now I know that he's talking about pets, right? Have a pet, oh, have a pet, okay, oh, I am, my bad. Cats and dogs are very popular. Most teenagers in Britain have a cell, this one's obvious, cell phone, okay? Most teenagers in Britain have an MP3 player. This one's obvious. Quite old. and We don't use mp3 players anymore, but <laughs> that's a different topic. Some teenagers don't have a CD player. A CD player is that thing that you guys saw in the beginning of the lesson. Some teenagers don't have, or some teenagers don't have a CD player now. Now as in it's kind of old. Okay? So, some teenagers don't have a passport. And that I find that strange, honestly. Some teenagers don't have a passport. They have holidays in Britain. A few teenagers go on holiday alone. They are really undermining teenagers, huh? <laughs> anyway, 
Alright, so alternators, so we have school, years, college, job, parents, houses, home, pet, phone, player, player again, passport, and finally holiday. Okay, these are the nouns for exercise F here. Now let's move on to reading. All right, you guys, lesson four, reading. Let's dive right in. So exercise A, when can you do these things in your country? So we have leave school, leave home, drive a car, and get married. Okay, and some of these are actually kind of more of a cultural thing, more than it is a law. Like obviously something like getting married or driving a car, this is obviously going to have some sort of law. But leaving home and school can be kind of cultural, you know what I mean? Like, for example, you know, in my country, Egypt, you know, you can, you can leave school at basically any time you want, right? Obviously, your parents must know and they should, you know, sign some papers or whatever. But, you know, as long as they know, you're fine, okay? And for me personally obviously the questions here are obviously entirely up to you so just don't write anything you know that I say write things based on your own country so number two leave home and leave home this is kind of controversial because you know in some places you can't really leave home until you turn 16 right and there's no one really that's gonna leave home you know younger than 16 but in my country personally there's kind of there's kind of no age where you can leave home you can leave whenever you want but because you know a lot of teenagers don't have enough money or are not financially stable should i say to have their own homes and be able to provide for themselves just you don't see a lot of people doing that actually like the percentage is really low and then we have number three drive a car this one's obvious for a lot of countries uh, so depending on the country, you can have it at 16 or 18 or 17 with a special license until you turn 18. But in Egypt, it's uh, 18. And actually, believe it or not, a lot of teenagers drive without a license in a lot of countries too, not just uh, Egypt. You know, you know, I see a lot of people driving cars without a license. Obviously, that's illegal and it could get you in trouble. But just letting you know that it happens. You know, but the age in Egypt is 18. And then we have four, get married. And this one's pretty simple. Uh, depending on the country, you could get married at either 18 or 21, right? But So for Egypt, I think it's around 18. Now let's go to exercise B. When can you do the things in exercise A in Britain? Okay, so the same exact things, but actually let, it, let me open this. Oh, and here we have the law, or should I say laws of Britain, okay? So know the law, what can you do at your age in Britain? According to the law, use our easy guide to find out. So here we have, at 11, you can work for a few hours on a farm. At 12, you can buy a pet. At 13 years old, you can get a part-time job. You can only do light work. For example, many children deliver newspapers. And then we have, at 14, you can work in a shop or a supermarket. For example, some children stack shelves. At 16, you can leave school, okay, you can leave home, you can ride a moped, and at 17, you can drive a car. Okay, here, here we go. At 18, you can vote, you can marry, you can have a credit card, you can smoke, and you can buy cigarettes. Okay, so it seems that a lot of countries have this in common where, you know, the, the age where you're, like, legally an adult, an adult is 18. Okay. Some things, obviously, like, let's say, for example, drinking alcohol and buying that, you know, in some countries it's 18, some, some countries it's 16, and some countries it's 21. Okay, but we can all agree that 18 is the age of, you know, someone turning into an adult. And then we have at 19, you can drive a lorry. And finally, at 21, you can adopt a child. Okay, so now let's go here. Here we have first one is leave school. So when can you leave school in Britain? Let's actually look here. You can leave school at 16. So I could just write down at oh at 16. Okay? And number 2 is leave home. 
And I want you guys to notice something here. When trying to look for information in a text, don't read the whole text over and over again. Just try to skim through it until you find the, you know, the piece of information that you need. So for example, I know that when, uh, at what age do I leave home? So I can just skim quickly until I find leave home, okay? All I need is this right here. I don't need to read all of that just to get here. So it is at 16 as well. So it seems like you can do a lot of things at 16 in Britain. So leave home at 16. Then we have number three, drive a car. So when can you drive? Here we go, at 17. So at 17 years old, you can drive a car in Britain. And finally, four, get married. When can you get married? I'm guessing 18, right? Yep, that's right. You can marry. Uh, by the way, the word marry and married, same thing, by the way. So at 18, you can marry slash get married. Okay, so at 18. So leave school at 16, leave home at 16 as well, drive a car at 17 and get married at 18 okay now let's move on here we have exercise C all the items and actions on the right are in know the law and this here know the law thingy so actually let's open this okay so can you name any of the items or actions and then find each word in know the law read the sentence is the word a noun or a verb write N or V in the box next to each picture Okay, and write the name of the item or action next to each picture as well. Okay, so here we have pictures, to sum it up short and sweet. Here we have pictures of certain jobs and places, right? And depending on the word, it's either a noun or a verb. So if it's a noun, we'll just write an N here. If it's a verb, we'll write a V here, okay? And we're going to have to, obviously, for example, this, let's say this is a farm. So you just write the name of the place or the name of the thing in the picture. Alright, so let's go and here we have know the law and obviously all of these things are in the know, know the law ad thingy here. So <laughs> we have at 11 you can work for a few hours on a farm and would you look at that I was correct. So farm, okay, and farm is obviously a noun you guys, farm is not a verb, okay so farm and now let's what was number two okay number two is a dog so this is probably a pet you can buy a pet at 12 here you go okay so we have pet right and pet is a noun okay then we have number three this one's pretty obvious you can get a part-time job you can do only do light work for example many children deliver newspapers okay so here we have newspaper, newspaper, and newspaper is also a noun, so here we have N. And okay, and here we have, I think it was something along the lines of stacking shelves. Let's actually look at that. At 14, you can work in a shop or a supermarket. For example, some children stack shelves. Okay, so, hmm. Do I have to, how do I, wanna, how can I write this? So, you know what I could do? I could write stack, or not stisk, <laughs> that was weird, so stack. Okay, for some reason I cannot type today, damn. Stack, right? And we have shelves, okay? and. Now, I, I realize that this is both a noun and a verb, so what I could do is probably write both of them, so just V slash N, okay? So stack, shelves, V, and N, okay? And I'm guessing this is, wh wh what was this called, uh, a moped? Let's actually look at that. You can leave school at 16, you can leave home, and you can ride a moped, okay? So simple mo pad right here and obviously this is a noun and what is that is this a uh, voting I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that's voting so you can drive a car and it finally at 18 you can vote yeah I'm pretty sure that's vote so here we go vote and we had that is actually a verb okay because I'm voting it's an action that I'm doing so that's a verb 
and I'm guessing this is a credit card as well so I'll, um, actually let me check just to be sure you can have a credit card yep that's the one so credit card okay and credit card is obviously a noun you guys now we have cigarettes this one does not need explanation okay so cigarettes boom, 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 cigarettes okay and uh, th that is a noun so cigarettes noun and you can drive a lorry so if you guys were wondering what a lorry is it's this big car right here that you can use to you know ship cargo or you know food and supplies to supermarkets and such okay so uh, I'm not gonna say lorry only I'm gonna actually say drive and lorry okay so the same thing with um, here stack and shelves and same thing as well so it's both a verb and a noun okay and finally we have oh, what is that is that like adopting a child maybe oh yeah, yeah, yeah it is it is so at 21 you can adopt a child so same thing again adopt and child okay both V and N verb and noun All right you guys so that was pr that was pretty simple actually yeah that was really good you can always pause and rewind if you need additional help with the exercise okay but um, what oh here we go exercise E what can you do in your country at your age so this is just a simple list and you can you know make of your own country and what can you do at your age right now so I'm 18 personally all of you are probably 18 or older so just make a quick list of what can you do in your country let's say for example I'll name three things that I can do in my country so for example I can drive I can buy a car and I can definitely um, live alone or leave home okay so you can make a, a, ha a longer list if you want but other than that let's move on to writing Alright you guys, now moving on to the final lesson of this unit right here, lesson 5, writing and grammar. Let's just hop right in. So we have exercise A. One letter is missing from each row. What is the letter? And second, read the skills check and check your answers. So let's actually just hop to the skills check first before doing the exercise. And here we have one letter and different many sounds. It could equal many different sounds. So the letter A, for example, let's take the letter A here it's not just gonna make that strict a sound okay so man you see man it it doesn't it does, I don't say man I say man okay so as you can see same letter but different sound baby okay so now that's the same a that we know a baby woman woman is entirely different was grass you guys see the difference so man baby woman was grass then we have e we have men okay person she and they so men is not like she at all you see the difference in pronunciation me or men and she they and person all right now check this out i this one's probably the easiest so here we have child children you see the difference it's like one is like a brick standing tall and the other one is like a highway child and children and finally right okay and oh we have woman women work mother okay just a huge difference you guys so just focus on actually just trying to you know find the difference and being able to pronounce the words that have different sounds for letters okay now here we have let's actually open this okay now read the skills check like we already did now let's check the words okay so number one will be adult number two will be woman number three will be baby and finally teenager okay so adult woman baby teenager number two I think these are the ones with the E so men okay women friend and person 
Okay, then we have child, I, children, friend again, okay, and finally, right, right? Now, we have woman, women, work, and finally, mother, all right? And actually, as soon as I wrote that, you see, the, the skills check popped up. That's a nice little feature right here. All right, so now let's move on. Exercise B, you complete the text, use a preposition from the box for each space. You can use some words more than once. Okay, so we have some prepos... Actually, let me open it right here. And here we have some prepositions, okay? And uh, with these prepositions, we're gonna uh, just you know, cruise through the uh, paragraph right here and just add the prepositions as as we go. So, teenage life in Britain. You can get a job dash Britain. So, you can get a job in Britain, right? So, I use in with a country or with a period of time, okay? So, in this case, it's a country, so you can get a job in Britain dash 13. I'm going to use at. So, where is at? at 13 so I use at with uh, age okay so 13 at so at 13 but there are many laws you cannot work dash 7 dash the morning okay so let's actually go back here you cannot work before 7 or actually where is it before yep right here so before 7 or after 7 so or after seven you cannot work before seven or nope 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 this is actually wrong in the morning you guys <laughs> did not notice the morning here so you cannot work before seven in the morning or after seven in the evening okay so we use in like I said with a period of time or country okay so evening is obviously a period of time and morning is also a period of time okay so before 7 in the morning or after 7 in the uh, evening on a school day I'm pretty sure this is on so on a school day alright so we use on with day so for example if I'm talking about a day or a specific day I'll use on okay children go dash school dash Britain dash Monday dash Friday okay so children go to alright so I use to with a pretty much you know school as in a fixed phrase or simply a time or day okay not time of day time of day we're gonna use in so the evening the morning but time or day okay so children go to school in okay in Britain I told you guys in from here's from now from and to you guys know we talked about this so from and to from Monday to Friday you can only work I'm guessing this is a uh, you can only work for two hours okay so four so four is also used for a period of time so you can only work for two hours three hours seven hours whatever it is use four with it for two hours on a school day okay so on a school day like I said we use day or on with day you can only work for five hours on Saturday on Saturday and two hours on Sunday okay so you can get a job in Britain at 13 but there are many laws you cannot work before 7 in the morning or after 7 in the evening on a school day Children go to school in Britain from Monday to Friday. You can only work for two hours on a school day. You can only work for five hours on Saturday and two hours on Sunday. Right? Now, let's move on. Here we have, uh, uh, yep, look at the boxes, exercise C. Number the gray boxes in order, and where, you, where can you put the phrases in the green boxes before, after, or in the center of the sentence, and copy the words to make sentences actually let me open this right here okay so we have we have where can you put the oh actually 
my bad, so we have school, children, leave, can, and we have at 16, and in Britain as green boxes. Okay, so I could probably say children can leave, or actually, nope, school will be right here. So children can leave school. This is just a simple, the most basic sentence, okay? Now, if, I'm, if I want to add at 16 and in Britain, there are multiple ways where I can do this, right? So I can say children can leave school at 16, or I'm not too sure this doesn't move, so okay. So let's just say it orally, so children can leave school at 16 in Britain. This is one way to, to do it, and this will be uh, to the end of the sentence. And we can also do it one more way. Children can leave school in Britain at 16. Okay? So now I have two ways. Children can leave school at 16 in Britain, or I could say children can leave school in Britain at 16. Okay? There's also one more correct way to say this. I could say children in Britain can leave school at 16. Okay? So for now, these are the ways to add at 16 and in Britain to you, this basic sentence right here. All right? Now, let us move on. Here we have order the words in each row to make a sentence. Okay, so let's actually open this right here. Okay, we have Britain most in teenagers' cell phone. Ah, and full stop. Okay, so I could say most teenagers have a cell phone in Britain. Okay? So this is one may one way <laughs> one way I could say. It. I could also say in Britain, so for example, in or I I mean this is the correct one, the basic one, but I could also make it a little bit more complicated. In Britain, and then I'll put like a comma most teenagers have a cell phone right or I could also say most teenagers in Britain have a cell phone you see I can just play with different you know sentence types you get the idea so it's not one fixed answer there are more than one you know answer so 2 14 at can get out my job in you country okay so I could say same thing. You can get a job at 14 in my country. Okay? So you can get a job at 14 in my country. I could also say in my country you can get a job at 14. Okay? So in my country you can get a job at 14. Now let's move on to number 3. We have 12 Tanzania in a married girl at can get. So I could say a girl this is the, the basic one a girl can get married oh right here so a girl can get married in Tanzania okay at 12 at 12 as in 12 years old and wow that is really young so a girl can get married in Tanzania at 12 I could also say in Tanzania a girl can get married at 12 okay this is also correct so now let's move on to the fun stuff here the actual grammar stuff let's go I mean, I'm I'm not. <laughs> I was just joking, by the way. This was all grammar that we were talking about. So, exercise E. Look at table one. Complete the table. So we have children can work, and he wants us to add a preposition. So, children can work dash a shop at 14. And you guys remember where do we use in? We use in in a kind with a country or peri period of time but it doesn't stop there so depending on the noun I could I could add in here right so children can work in a shop 
at 14. So ch children can work in a shop at 14. Number two, many students live dash home until they marry. And I actually, I think I said this, home is used with at, okay? So I could say, many students live at home, okay? So I'll add at, actually, if I can open this, this would be, oh, there we go, this is much better. So I could say, in here, in a shop, and many students live at home until they marry. Although, I'm not too sure I agree with that one, but okay. So many students live at home until they marry, right? Most adults go dash work by car. So go from place to place, so two. So most adults go to work by car. Let's move on here to table two. So exercise F, look at table two and complete the table. So here we have noun plus verb plus another noun, okay, plus other, so as an object, for example. So we have children can leave dash at 16, right? A few teenagers drive dash at 18. Most people stop dash at 65. So if I'm going to add, like, for example, a noun, I could say children can leave school slash home okay at 16 I could also say a few teenagers drive I could say cars at 18 that's the only logical answer so a few teenagers drive cars at 18 most people stop work at 65 okay so most people stop work at 65 all right so uh, I could also say like one uh, just my own sentence here I could say most teenagers start paying bills at 18 okay just just a random sentence that popped into my head now let's go to exercise G look at table 3 complete the table so same thing again so teenagers dash or do not or have or don't have an mp3 player and we could say others for example Britain or 17 you know you got the idea so here we go so teenagers I could say here um, I could say for example kids okay or most teenagers actually no 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 I'm not gonna say kids that was just weird so most okay so most teenagers okay do not or don't both are correct have so have is the exact same an mp3 player or have a cd player right and in the other that will be blank and then number two teenagers can or can't or cannot drive or drive again so drive a car or drive a lorry at here i'm going to use at as a preposition guys okay so at seventeen okay and i could say in as a preposition again and britain I oh okay <laughs> so where were we yep here we are drive a lorry at 17 in Britain right now let's move to exercise H look at table 4 what do we call verbs like can and ask your partner questions about his or her country begin with can and you must get a negative answer we'll just scratch that one off so we have can you guys remember can we talked about it I think it was unit 4 so you can always go back to you know understand more about can so can and cannot can teenagers vote in your country it's a question if I start with can then you should know it's, it's, it's gonna be a question right so can teenagers work for example in a shop or can people stop work at 60 can people work in a shop? I, I know these can be weird questions, but they're correct nonetheless. Okay. So here we have now. Uh, what should? What does he want exactly? So ask your partner questions about his or her country. So let's say, for example, if I want to ask you guys a question, I could say, "Can kids stop going to school in your country?" Okay. Or can teenagers drive in your country hmm can 
can you chew gum in your country? I know because I'm <laughs> I'm really not too sure why I said that, but some people, some countries are not some. I think it was one country like Singapore that banned chewing gum or something like that. But nonetheless, not our topic. Let's move on. The so exercise I look at table five. Where does the noun go? And actually, let me open this model or model. Yeah, noun, infinitive, and other. So here we here we have where does the noun go here? So as you can see, the noun here is teenagers, children, people. And is it before the modal or after the infinitive? Okay, so it's not after the infinitive. That's a fact. It's not also before the modal. So is it between the modal and the infinitive? Yes, it is. So we'll take this right here. Okay. So answers to, the, to, to these questions can be yes, they can. No, they can't. Okay. I don't need to go more specific. We talked about this before. So write three questions for your partner. Hmm. I could probably say, you guys remember the questions that we just asked? So for example, can teenagers drive in your country? I, I'll probably answer by saying yes, they can. Um, something else can be, can children, uh, or no, 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 not, not children, can, for example, uh, expatriates vote in your country? And that is obviously a no-go no no expatriates vote whatsoever so <laughs> all right so this is kind of the idea you should a actually as a project or not a project as some, just a simple exercise you should just go and ask your friends s these can questions and try and get an answer out of them so now let's move on here to here we have actually before i move on we have here we have uh, the table five word, modal, noun, infinitive, and other. Okay, so here we have when, where, what, these are the question words. And then we have can, people. Now I'm asking more specific questions. So instead of saying, you know, for example, can people uh, vote in your country or can teenagers vote in your country, I'm now getting more specific because I want a more specific answer. So if I t if I tell you, for example, when can teenagers vote in your country? You can't say to me, yes, they can or no, they can't. That's not a valid answer anymore. So I, you have to give me a more specific answer. So for example, uh, they can vote when they turn 18. They can vote when they grow a little older. You get the idea. I could say, what can people do at 16, right? Or what can teens do at 16? By this, I could give an answer like, um, they could go, they could work for minimum hours, they could make minimum wage, they could play video games, whatever, but I can't ever say yes, they can, or no, they can't, with a, with a question that starts with when, or the question words, okay? Now, let's go to exercise J. Look at table 6 and find the question words, the pronoun, the infinitives, and the objects, okay? So the question words, obvious, here we have how and what. The pronoun will be you, okay? The infinitives will be say, spell, call, and finally the objects will be this word, people, this thing. All right, you guys? That was simple enough. Now let's move on. Turn the page here. All right, here we have exercise A again. There is one mistake in each sentence, find it and correct it. And before we do that, let's hop on to the skills check one here. So we have irregular plurals. So most nouns in English are regular. So for example, the plural is the noun plus s or es or ies, okay? However, some nouns have irregular plurals and you must learn them. There's no way around that. So for example, here we have child, turns into a completely different word, so child. Children, it's even pronounced differently. Man, instead of saying mans, I say men. Woman, women. Person, people. Different words, okay? And you have to learn these and memorize them. So here we have, let, let me actually open the exercise here. Here we have, there's one mistake in each sentence. Find it and correct it. So we have number one, in Britain, childs do not go to school on Saturday and Sunday. Can you guess what's the wrong noun here? That's correct. 
there's nothing called child. Okay, so it'll be this will be children. All right, so children will be number one. So in Britain, children do not go to school on Saturday and Sunday. Number two, there are three mans in my office. Obviously, mans is wrong. We don't have anything called mans in English, so men. So there are three men in my office. How many women's can you see in the picture? Again, same mistake. No, nothing known as women's. We have women. So instead of A, we write E, and that's the plural. So how many women can you see in the picture? And finally, we have number four. A lot of persons in Britain don't smoke. And this is wrong. This will be people. So a totally different word. So people. Okay? So a lot of people in Britain don't smoke. Right? Now let's move on. Here we have exercise C. Study this sentence. Teenagers can leave school at 16. Okay? And he wants us to find and underline the nouns. What what can we call the first noun and what about the second one? Okay. So before we do that, let's actually read skills check two. So we're going to be talking about the subject and object. So all verbs need a subject. Okay. So I I don't usually start my ver you know my sentence with a verb without a subject, right? So I can't say for example, work in a shop, right? that just doesn't make sense or if I say for example if I just scratch these right here and, and I say uh, can vote at 18 right it just you don't you simply don't understand right so I, I have to add a subject to make the sentence meaningful so if I add teenagers can work in a shop now it's a lot more understandable and I actually know what the other person is saying and they a pronoun so they can vote at 18 okay so here we have teenagers can leave school at 16 okay so find and underline the nouns the nouns will obviously be teenagers okay so teenagers can leave can leave will be the verb and school will be the other noun so teenagers and school and at 16 is just other we don't have that okay so what can we call the first noun? So obviously teenagers, that will be the subject, okay? And we after the verb is the object, okay? And actually let's go to the skills check here. Many verbs need an object too. And listen, he said many verbs, he didn't say all verbs. So there are some cases where th there can be, you know, a verb without an object. It's just not that common, okay? But he here he said all verbs need a subject thus telling us that you know you need a subject always with a verb right so let's take some examples here and we have teenagers can have a job that's an object they can leave school some children deliver newspapers okay teenagers can leave school okay and here he says subjects and objects can be nouns or pronouns. So it's not just nouns, by the way. So it can be both nouns and pronouns. And often, not always, but often, the subjects are usually people. So for example, teenagers, adults, uh, parents, you get the idea. And objects are things. And actually, we have a good example here with our um, the sentence. So we have teenagers, people, can leave, that's the verb, and school. School is a thing. Okay. This is not always the case, by the way, but it happens often. Okay, you guys? So now, let's actually go to exercise D here. Read the text about legal ages and mark the subject S, the verb V, and the object O. So let me actually open this right here. Okay, so let's actually read this first once and then we'll add the subject verb and object. So, in Algeria, teenagers can leave school at 16. They can get a job at 16. Males can marry at 21. Females can marry at 18. Teenagers can drive at 18. They can vote at 18. 
okay so that was simple enough so let's start now so we have in Algeria this is nothing teenagers can leave school at 16 obviously teenagers will be the subject okay can can and leave will both be verb okay and school will be the object right and at 16 is simply just leave a it blank it's other okay and then we have they can get a job at 16 so they will be the subject again can get will be the verb again and a job will be the object okay and at 16 is blank here we go again males can marry at 21 males will be the subject and notice how you know I told you guys often the subject is uh, people okay so here we have good cases so teenagers they and males so s as in subject can marry will be the verb and at 21 is actually we don't have an object here you guys notice this I actually for a second I was like where's the object but turns out here we don't have object or uh, the object so males can marry at 21 this is a sentence that has only the verb doesn't have the object right and here we have females can marry at 18 so females will be the subject can marry will be the verb and that's it okay so no object here as well teenagers can drive at 18 so teenagers will be the subject can drive will be the verb oh and <laughs> at 18 this is also uh, a sentence that doesn't have an object and finally I'm guessing this one doesn't have an object as well um, this is weird what is this number so they will be the subject can vote will be the verb and that's about it as well so no object here so we have two sentences that have uh, object right and the object and we have three cent or actually four not three one two three four that do not have an object All right you guys so now let's go to exercise E here and before we do that let's actually read skills check three because it's related so jo joining sentences with and or but so we can join sentences with similar information okay with and so we use the word and with similar information okay so for example uh, if I say uh, you know the legal driving age is 18 and you can also uh, you know work at 18 okay these are similar points so I can use and to add them together okay but when joining sentences with different information we use uh, we use but okay so let's have an example here teenagers can drive at 18 and they can vote at 18 so you see the similarity the similarity is the obviously the number 18 as an age so I, I use and to, you know add, add two things together so teenagers can drive at 18 and they can vote at 18 but if I want to talk about something completely different here we go males can marry at 21 but females can marry at 18 and here's something that I actually want to talk to you guys about the sentences uh, that you know he, he here he said the sentences in the text above are short there's nothing with uh, or there's nothing wrong with short sentences it's just that people sometimes you know they can get more excited with longer sentences okay so instead of me reading over and over they can get a job at 16 uh, they can leave school at 16 okay it, it, it gets repetitive really quickly so if I switch it up and say teenagers can drive at 18 and they can vote at 18 now it's a lot more interesting and that is why people use longer sen sentences but there's nothing nothing wrong with short ones okay now uh, number three here or actually we have to go with number one first which sentences can we join with and or but okay so I can probably say teenagers can leave school 
and they can get a job at 16. You guys remember pronouns and nouns? So I don't want to say teenagers twice. I don't want to sound repetitive. So instead of saying teenagers can leave school and teenagers can get a job at 16, it's correct, but it's repetitive. So instead, I use they. So teenagers can leave school and they can get a job at 16. All right? Now, let's use but here. So males can marry at 21, but females can marry at 18. And this is actually one of the examples here. Okay, these actually these examples are the same. All right? So males can marry at 21, but females can marry at 18. Okay? Now, let us move on here. And here we have exercise F. Read the sentences, circle the correct word or phrase in each case. And actually, I'm going to open this right here. So number one, most adults buy car to work or go to work by car. Now, obviously, the latter is correct. To work by car is the correct answer. Number two, children can a job have at 13 or have a job at 13. Obviously, the latter is also true. So children can not a job have, that is not English, have a job at 13. Number three, many children have a job. Am I talking about one job for one child or jobs for children? Yep, that's correct. The first one, I'm talking about jobs for different children. So many children have jobs. Okay, now number four, can vote teenagers in your country or teenagers vote in your country and this is a question so can teenagers vote in your country okay now number five when children can leave school can children leave school also a question so I'm not I'm not making a statement here you know I'll use this if I use it in the beginning of a sentence I could say for example children can leave school by 2 p.m. okay I don't say that so he, he's asking for a question so when can children leave school okay here we have some old people don't have or have not a cell phone and this is just easy don't have a cell phone is the correct answer number seven do work you in a bank or do you work in a bank so and obviously this is a question so do you work in a bank eight I live in or at a small house okay so I live in inside a small house okay now simple enough now let's move on here here we have exercise G read the notes about Turkey and then write a short text and join some sentences use and or but okay you guys remember Andrew but so country Turkey so you can get a job or teenagers can get a job at 13 they can leave school at 14 and wow that's young they can marry for uh, 17 years old of age for males and 15 for females and wow that is really really early so you're telling me they can drive at 18 but they can get married at 15 that's insane <laughs> not my topic but just <laughs> just whatever so marry 17 for males and 15 for females uh, teenagers can drive when they turn 18 and they can vote when they turn 18 as well so now let's write a short text and join some sentences so I could say let's find the similarities so we have drive and vote so I could say teenagers or actually can I open this I cannot unfortunately so I'll, we'll just have to do it this way orally so drive so teenagers can drive at 18 and they can vote at 18 you see how I got them together okay and now using but hmm let's start with something you know kind of not negative but yeah sort of negative and then we'll move to a something positive so I could say teenagers leave school or can sorry not, uh, not leave school so teenagers can leave school at 14 but 
they can get a job at 13. Okay? You get the idea. Males, or actually, let's use, yeah, same situation here. Males can marry at 17, but females can marry at 15. Okay? Now, here we have just, this is just something really simple to finish off the uh, unit here. So, exercise H, make notes about the legal age in your country. We already did this, but let's just do it again, you know, based on your country. There's no definitive answer here. You can pause the video, do it. Okay, so country, add information about more things, so information about legal age and getting a job. So getting a job in my country will probably be 16, so 16, just number 16. Leave school, I mean culturally people don't leave school at all, so I'll just say 18. Get married, uh, probably 18 as well. Drive, definitely 18. And vote, uh, I think it was 16. Alright, so these are from my country you can switch it up you know depending on your country and your laws all right i'll see you guys in the next unit peace out